All right, so our study of the mole starts with a discussion of atoms um, and the fact that atoms are really small. They're, they're not something that we can see in lab. They're not something we can count. Uh, even with our microscopes we have in biology class where you look at cells and things, you can't see atoms. They're, they're just way, way, way too small. Um, and to prove my point here, I have a calculation. The smallest, or the largest, I mean, atom on the periodic table. So each of the elements on the periodic table are different atoms with different numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons. That's something we've learned in our science past. The largest of the atoms on the periodic table is cesium, and it has a radius of 265 picometers. Now, picometers are something we've learned before. That is times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So ridiculously small values. I mean, we've written that before. We've written times 10 to the minus 9 for nano, minus 6 for micro, even minus 3 for millimeter. And a millimeter is something we can recognize because we can start to see those. And, and we've been measuring in the lab with rulers, and so we know what that looks like. So cesium is the largest of the elements in terms of its individual atoms uh, at 265 picometers. So I did a little calculation, just some dimensional analysis, something you could do. I converted one millimeter to atoms of cesium. So one millimeter to meters, and then from meters to picometers, and then use that conversion of the uh, diameter or the, or the radius of a cesium, change it to the diameter of a cesium, and I figured out that you could fit about 1.9 million cesium atoms side by side in that little tiny millimeter that we've been measuring in lab. So that's crazy small. Um, again, incomprehensibly small to have almost 2 million graduations inside of that little millimeter. So I did another one, just a silly little conversion. If they were tennis balls, which have about a 6.7 centimeter diameter according to Wikipedia, uh, that comes out to be about 79 miles long. So if you were to put that many tennis balls in line, it would be about 79 miles long. So that's how many atoms there are in that little tiny space if they were the biggest atom on the periodic table. So if you get smaller, then it's even more atoms. Uh, so my point is, although atoms cannot be physically counted, we can't see them under a normal microscope, you can still figure out how many you have within significant digits based on some conversion factors. And so those conversion factors um, kind of start with this one. Uh, one atom of hydrogen, so one little tiny individual atom of the hydrogen element, has a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. Just like before, it's incomprehensibly small. Uh, our balances in lab that we've been using all year long measure to 0 0.01 grams. So the smallest thing we can measure is 1 times 10 to the minus 2. In order to measure this value, you'd have to have 0 0.000 and 23 more until you get to the 1. So Again, incomprehensibly small. We can't use that value. So what chemists have done is they've come up with another way to express the mass of an atom other than grams to make it more meaningful. Um, it's called an atomic mass unit. It's abbreviated with a unit either AMU or just U for atomic mass unit. And it is equal to one-twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So here's a carbon-12 atom. We say that that weighs 12, so if you divide that by 12, then you get one atomic mass unit or just one U to say, all right, so then if I have oxygen, which, again, we look on the periodic table, we can go look for the atomic mass, which is what this is referred to as the atomic mass, atomic mass of oxygen. So we look on a periodic table. Uh, let me go grab one here on my computer. Uh, so we... We look on our periodic table for oxygen, and this is something we're going to do quite often now. And we find on the periodic table, let me make this a little bigger, over here, oxygen. So right here, oxygen is 16.00. What that means is oxygen, and I always round my masses from the periodic table to three significant digits. That means oxygen, one oxygen atom, has a mass of 16.0 atomic mass units. Look up calcium. Back to our periodic table, calcium over here in the second column. Calcium has a mass of 40.08. So I round that, again, three digits, one, two, three, and then round. There's an eight after it. So 
and we could do the same thing for cobalt or any of the other elements on the periodic table. Now the key to understanding that is, that is the mass of one cobalt atom, or one oxygen atom, or one calcium atom, or any of the other elements on the periodic table. So it, again, it is called an atomic mass, it's the mass of one atom. But is that helpful? In other words, can you measure the mass of two atoms of oxygen in lab? You can't. Um, think about that millimeter. In a millimeter, you have almost two million, or three million, or four million, depending on the radius of the element, atoms. And so you can't just count two of them. It's, again, incomprehensibly small. Um, you'd need... So instead, we measure a really large number of them. That number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of an element. And we're going to get a little more specific about what all of this number means and when can you use this number, when can't you. But for right now, we're going to talk about how the relationship between individual atoms and grams that we measure in lab. Because grams are something we could measure. And that is related by a guy named At Amadeo Avogadro. Um, he was studying gases, and what he found was that equal volumes of gases had the same number of, of particles or molecules. Uh, and through other deductions, we come up with this value right here, now referred to as Avogadro's number. Um, Avogadro's number of atoms in an element is significant for us because it defines what is called a mole. So a mole is a universal value in chemistry. Uh, things come together in whole number mole ratios. When we balance reactions, they react in moles. When you write a chemical formula, H2O, that 2 is 2 moles of hydrogen, 1 mole of oxygen, for example. Uh, so moles is a pretty universal value, and it's how we get from atoms to grams. Now, how does that work? Well, the way it works is this one right here. Now, I think this is a rather confusing sentence, but it it illustrates exactly what we need to know in order to understand what a mole is. It turns out that the mass of one atom of oxygen in atomic mass units, so if you have one atom of oxygen, it equals 16.0 U atomic mass units, is equal to the mass of a mole of oxygen atoms in grams. So instead of having one atom of oxygen equaling 16 atomic mass units, you can have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen, which is equal to a mole of oxygen atoms, and that is equal to 16.0 grams of oxygen. That's the key, because grams we can measure. All right, so let's read that again. It turns out the mass of one oxygen atom, one little teeny tiny oxygen atom in atomic mass units, which is 16, is equal to the mass of a mole of oxygen atoms in grams. So that 16 atomic mass units becomes 16 grams when you measure Avogadro's number of, molecule, of atoms. I just reiterate it again. So there's our key conversion for now. When we're talking about elements, when we're talking about elements from the periodic table, one mole of those elements is equal to Avogadro's number of atoms. So a huge number of atoms um, is Avogadro's. There's all kinds of analogies to this. You could go look some up. Um, it's sort of like a dozen is 12, a pair is 2, a mole is... 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something. You could have a mole of eggs, you could have a mole of shoes, um, you can have a mole of oxygen atoms, and that would be Avogadro's number. So one mole is, once again, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This little guy right here, his name is Burrow D. Mole. Uh, he was created by, I'm not really sure who did it, but um, moleday.org. Uh, you could go look it up. They created something called Mole Day. It is based on this 10 to the 23rd idea, 10 being the, 20, or the uh, 10th month, which is October 23rd. So it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, there are all kinds of themes associated with this. You can go back and look at these on, um, on that website, which I'll show you in a second. So these are T-shirts you can buy. Some exciting, That's one of my favorite ones. Some of the exciting chemistry things you could do. Have a ball. 
uh, Molday.org, like I said. All right, so now what's the significance of this for us then? All right, so find oxygen once again. We said before one atom of oxygen had a mass of 16 atomic mass units. Well, one mole of oxygen atoms is going to have a mass of 16 grams. So that's for oxygen. So now every element on the periodic table has this value of grams in a mole. It is referred to as its molar mass. So molar mass would be expressed in grams per mole. So grams per mole, grams equal to one mole for each individual element. So we did calcium before, it was 40.1 atomic mass units when you had one calcium atom. If you have a mole of calcium atoms, you have 40.1 grams. Again, something we can measure in lab. Cobalt atoms, a mole of them. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of cobalt would equal 58.9 grams of cobalt. So that's the idea behind it. So here's some pictures. Carbon, if we look up carbon on the periodic table, you're going to find out it has a molar mass of 12.0 grams per mole. So that would represent one mole here of graphite, the black powder uh, form of carbon. Over here we have sulfur, 32.1 grams per mole. So that one mole of, of sulfur is going to weigh 32.1 grams. We have mercury, 201 grams per mole. Copper, 63.5 grams per mole. Iron, 55.9 grams per mole. So there's, again, some pictures of copper wire, one mole of each of those substances. The mass is called a molar mass, and like I already said, it is grams per mole. Now, the way you find a molar mass of not an individual element, but of a compound like water, is you count how many you have of each. So in this particular formula of water, H2O, I have two hydrogens, and I have one oxygen. So to find the molar mass, I am going to take, all right, so I say I have two H's, one O, two times the mass of hydrogen, Again, I always take three significant digits from the periodic table, so 1.008 becomes 1.01. Count 1, 2, 3, and then round 2.02. One oxygen, so 1 times the mass of oxygen, 16.0. I add these two together, and that is the molar mass, now, not of an individual atom or element, but of a compound. So H2O has a molar mass of 18.0 grams per mole. That means... 18.0 grams of water equals one mole of water. And now I can use that to convert back and forth in lab, because my balances don't weigh in moles, they weigh in grams, um, but things react in moles, and so I have to be able to convert back and forth between the two. How about one more? How about a little trickier one where we have parentheses? How many calciums? Well, the parentheses only apply to the one inside of the parentheses, and then the subscript gets multiplied in to the other subscript. So calcium outside of the parentheses no subscript on it, so it's understood to be a 1. And then I have two nitrogens because of these subscript 2. There's a nitrogen is 1, and times 2 is 2. And then I have, again, the key to that one is understanding that I'm multiplying. So I have six oxygens. So then the molar mass, 1 calcium, 2 nitrogens, 6 oxygens, 1 times 40.1, 2 times 14.0, the atomic mass of nitrogen. Um, 6 times 16.0. I said atomic mass, but really I mean molar mass. So the molar mass of the individual element. 40.1, 20.0, 60, 30, 96, 1, 14, 1, 5, 7. So 164.1 grams per mole for calcium nitrate. So that means 164. 0.1 grams of calcium nitrate equals one mole of calcium nitrate. So that's molar mass, and uh, hope you enjoy it.